Brothers and sisters, we want to thank God for this wonderful morning once again that I come before you just to share a word of encouragement. I want us just to go straight to the word of God. I want us to share with us from the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2. I'll read from verses 1 to 5. Let us read together. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who had him. God also bearing witness both signs and wonders with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his will. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the gift of word that you've given unto us, that Lord, even as we meditate upon this word, our Father, May you, Lord, also minister unto us, O God. May you speak to us. And Lord, may you teach us and guide us according to your word. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are talking about the book of Hebrews. We have read from the book of Hebrews 2, verses 1 to 4. And the book of Hebrews was written to a group of Christians who are almost giving up and abandoning their faith. Most of them were Jews who had become Christians. And verses 1 encourages us to take heed of the things that we have heard. And the things that we have heard are the things of God. And so, and so through the word of God, through what we have heard from the prophets, the angels are telling us to refer to the teachings that we have heard previously. And I believe that each and every one of us, we have been hearing the word of God. We have been standing firm on the foundation of God. And at this point, Hebrews 1, Hebrews 2, verse 1 is reminding us to take heed, to be serious of those things that we have heard before. And so I remembered in the Sunday school days, when we were being taught, I remember a song that used to say, Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in the Lord, but to trust and obey. These are some of the things that we are told that we need to remember. Those words that we have been taught according to the word of God. And the word was, has been spoken to us clearly in the past. And those with ears have been able to hear what the word of God is saying. And even today, we have not stopped hearing the word of God. And I thank the church of St. Luke Sumoja because despite the, the challenges that we are going through now, we are still able to hear the word of God on a day-to-day -day basis. And how do we keep, the times are not easy now. And this is why I'm encouraging us that let us stick to the firm foundation that we have had, and that is the word of God. During this time, nothing can keep us going except the word of God. Nothing can keep us going except prayer. Nothing can keep us going except fasting and trusting in our God and obeying his word. How do we keep the word of God? How do we keep that firm foundation, the first truth? that we have heard before. One of them is by guarding our hearts. And today we are going to talk about be on guard. That is what we are talking about, be on guard. And so one of the ways that we can keep the word of God is by guarding our hearts. The other way we can keep the word of God is by guarding our salvation. And how do we guard our hearts? As Christians, during this time when things are happening around us, 
How do you guard your heart? One, you guard by heart by studying the word of God carefully. The word of God shall heal your heart. The word of God shall teach you how to live. The word of God shall give you guidance and hope. And above all, it will make you a victor during these hard times. Because when you hear the word of God, it shall guide you. Study it carefully. Understand it. Listen and hear what is it that God is telling you in his word. The other way that we can be able to hear the word of God and guard our hearts is by being alert. Christians, we need to be alert at this particular time. The one who guides his or her heart must be alert to the word of God. Be alert to the people around you. Be alert to prayer. What kind of friends do you have? Are they friends that are discouraging you during this time? Or are they friends that are encouraging you and telling you it is well? All shall be well because this is temporary. And within a short while it shall be gone. What kind of friends are around you? What about your prayer life? What about your giving? Let us learn the word of God. Let us seek God in his word. And even now we need to know as a Christian, who is around you? What is happening around you? What is your attitude about what is happening around you? Who needs you wherever you are, where we stay, where we work? Those who are still able to go out in their businesses, are you alert about your surrounding? Are you alert about those who need you and who needs your intervention into their lives? Let us not involve ourselves in the things that will not add value to the kingdom of God. Ask yourself, Whatever it is that you're doing, is it able to add value to the, to the kingdom of God? Number three, let us be careful not to get into temptation. I know now most of us are home. Some of us are idle. There's nothing that we are doing. Some of us at this particular time, the finances are not incoming. And so you may be tempted to get into things that are not worthy before God. Be careful not to get into temptation. Be careful not to do anything that is not pleasing to God. Number four, be a tower that is not shaken. Be ready to defend yourself with the word of God. The only way we can remain towers, the only way we can encourage other people, the only way that we can defend ourselves with the word of God is by reading his word. Jesus knew the word. And no matter how many times Jesus had challenges, he was able to quote the word of God. What are we able to quote today when things are so hard, when we cannot move? What are you able to say that is your defense in this kingdom of God? Number five, let us keep vigil. Do not slumber. And you cannot slumber when you guard your soul, when you guard your spirit and when you guard your being. The word of God tells us to guard our spirit, guard our souls, and guard our beings. What is it that your mouth is saying? During these times when things are not easy, what is your mouth saying? What is it that your mouth is saying at this particular time? Is your mouth talking blessings to other people? Or is your mouth saying, because let us remember that what our tongue confesses, is what we receive. What are you confessing? What does your spirit tell you? It's very important when you and your spirit can communicate and when you can hear what is it that the spirit is telling you during this period about your family, about the nation, about the church. What is your spirit telling you? And let us also ask ourselves, what about our souls? Where is your soul wandering? Because I know at this time, the souls wander in many places. Your soul may be wandering on sources of getting money. Your soul may be wandering on sources of encouraging other people. Your soul may be wandering in many, many issues. Where is your soul wandering? Ask yourself, what about my soul? And where is my soul wandering? When we guard the tree, then we shall as well guard our salvation. May the Lord help us to be on guard during these difficult times. Let us learn from him. Let the Lord hold on. Let us hold on to him. 
And let us appreciate God for the many things he has been doing unto us during the good times. The God Lord is telling us that he shall be with us during the good and the bad times. And we need to always rejoice in every situation in our lives. And I shall take us back to our theme for the year. That is Hebrews 13. I shall ask us to read Hebrews 13. Verses 30, and that was our theme for the year, as we can remember, and it tells us, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take position, for we are well able to overcome it. As I continue, but the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that divorces its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, come from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. I do not know what we are seeing ourselves as. Because for now, I know that the corona is there. Ask yourself, is corona bigger than your God or is corona smaller than your God? And I believe that because corona to me is smaller than my God, I know that we shall overcome as Caleb told the Israelites that they shall overcome. Let us have faith in him let us guard our hearts on salvation so that we may not fall into sin. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. I want to exalt your holy name. We you want your name, O oh Lord, to be glorified because, Father, we know that you are the giant in our lives, O oh God. Father, we know that you can take us wherever you want. And, Lord, we know that you can keep us, O oh God, up to the end. Heavenly Redeemer, I want to thank you. May you help us, O oh God, to guard our hearts and to guard our salvation as we wait upon you, Heavenly Father. Hold us together, Lord. Lord, bless your people and let your will be done into their lives. We thank and we bless you, for it is in your holy name that we pray and believe. Amen. Amen.